So, a few months ago, we did a responding to your comments video on how to treat sunburn. The video is done really well, and I think we probably had over a thousand messages of people asking me, Abraham, what sunscreens do you recommend? So you asked for it, and you got it. But before we begin, I just want to tell you this one thing. I know that YouTubers are often approached by many companies to endorse or recommend their products. I'm also approached by many of these companies as well, but I do feel it's unethical of me to do this. So what I'm not going to be doing in this video is recommending you a certain product. But what I will do is I'm going to teach you how to protect yourself from the sun, and I'm also going to teach you what to look out for, what ingredients to look out for, and how to pick the best sunscreen from any pharmacy. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to go to work, and I'll see you there. So for us to understand sunscreens, we first need to understand how our skin reacts to ultraviolet light. And to do this, we use something called the Fitzpatrick skin type scale, which should pop up now. Have a look at it, maybe pause the video and determine which skin type you are. I would classify myself as a type three. Now we will come back to skin types a bit later on in the video, but first let's learn about sunscreen. So sunscreens can contain two agents known as chemical absorbers and physical absorbers. Now chemical absorbers are more commonly found in sunscreens and the way they work is by converting UVB radiation into heat. Physical absorbers, however, aren't commonly found in sunscreens and they're insoluble pigments found in the sunscreen and when you apply it, it forms a non-transparent layer on the skin physically blocking both UVA and UVB radiation. So how do you check if your sunscreen has a physical blocker? Well, it's pretty simple. Just read the ingredients for things like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. They're basically your ingredients that are physical blockers. But remember this, generally speaking, when a sunscreen has a physical blocker, it is a little thicker to use and it also may leave a white layer on your skin. I don't mind it, many people don't, but it's good for you to know that. Okay, so what about SPF? SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor, and it describes the protection you get against burning from UVB radiation. So it tells you how long you can stay in the sun without burning. Now let's say your sunscreen is SPF 50, and you can usually spend about 10 minutes in the sun without burning. Now by applying an SPF 15 sunscreen, it's gonna mean you can spend 15 times longer in the sun without burning. So 15 multiplied by your 10 minutes duration, which you're good with, gives you 150 minutes in the sun without burning. But the question is, how accurate is SPF? Is it an exact science? Well, I'm afraid it's not, because what SPF doesn't do is it doesn't take into account many different variables. So one example is the intensity of solar radiation. So this can differ at different times of the day, different seasons, and also the reflection of solar radiation off surfaces. So where are you? Are you on water? Are you on snow? Are you on sand? All of these can have a massive impact. So SPF protects against UVB radiation. But what about UVA radiation? It doesn't cause burning, but it does cause skin aging, wrinkles, and skin cancer. Now, UVA protection is classified by a star rating. And I don't actually think many people are aware of this. And I do think that the sunscreen manufacturers should make this more visible so everyone's aware. So you have star ratings of one to five. One gives you about 20 to 40% protection against UVA radiation. And five star, which is the best, gives you about 90 to 100% protection against UVA radiation. So you now know Know how sunscreens work about SPF and UVA protection but which sunscreen should you get which is the best well generally speaking you need to go for a sunscreen with an SPF of 30 and a UVA protection of five stars but do you remember the Fitzpatrick scale that we spoke about at the start well the reason I mentioned this is that if you are an adult whose skin type is one that burns very easily then it may be more appropriate for you to get a sunscreen with a higher SPF now in terms of application you need to be applying a quantity of six to eight teaspoons worth of sunscreen at least 30 minutes before going out in the sun. You also need to reapply at least every two hours. You might need to reapply more often if you're getting wet and it's getting washed off. So normally, I don't like to be the healthcare professional who's all doom and gloom, but getting sunburn is very serious and getting it just once every two years triples your risk of melanoma type skin cancer. So I can't stress the importance enough that you protect yourself from the sun, you protect your family, your loved ones, even tell strangers. If they're not doing things right, let them know because you're protecting them too. Also, by the way, getting sunburn doesn't just mean when your skin is red and peeling off. Sunburn is also classified as when your skin is pink, when it's red, when it's irritated. All of this is also sunburn. There's also many other things that you can do to protect yourself from the sun, such as wearing loose fitting clothes, wearing a hat, spending more time in the shade, and not going out in the sun between 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. when the sun is most intense. Also, don't forget to wear sunglasses and wear a lip balm with an SPF. 
I'll actually leave a load more information in the description below, which I'd recommend everyone to read on protecting yourself from the sun. Okay, and I guess now you are a sunscreen pro. So welcome to the club, enjoy buying your product, you now know what to look out for, you now know what to get, and you can even impress your friends with all your new knowledge. Have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you next week. SPF. SPF. Always beeping at his phone. Always beeping with your comments. Well, that was WhatsApp actually, so I did tell a lie there. But a lot of the times it is your comments. Five star rating, well, that's 10 star. Many different variables. One example, for example, for example, one example, for example. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow, or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.